It's a Trev Stone show, you need a veteran, a pro, whose head is in the know, ripping Michigan cold, up a peninsula bruh, but worldwide listeners, a million views on the internet, I'm pro sports extra, dishing it with the ghost who's interviewing us 12 years old, that's how I lead it, this chat with comedians, athletes, sad a genius, news so fast it's immediate, way past intermediate, podcasts you're needing it, facts you computer shit, that's what the future is, guests are about cash, cash, entrepreneurship, moving on the music jam, in the hottest Instagram models, you can view the gram. Get the inner insight of those that had their wins right. Get a higher view through a window like a sand flight. You desire for the truth, entertainment trends right. So it's time to start the show and get the insight. All right, guys, welcome to episode number 10. This episode we have on Uche Waneri. We talk about a whole bunch of stuff. This is actually one of the longer podcasts, but it's definitely worth it. You know, we talk about his entire football career. His least favorite coach, his favorite coach. We shared some laughs. Um, we talked about everything going on with COVID, his thoughts on everything, his thoughts on the NFL draft this weekend. Is there any points that you want to point out, Nick? Uh, no, not specifically. I think, you know, you'll hear it all from Uche. He's very open and honest and, you know, had a lot of great stories for us and a couple of good ones about Ray Lewis also. Right. So, guys, if you enjoy this podcast, be sure to go back and listen to the previous nine episodes you guys will enjoy that uh be sure to like rate and subscribe and i hope you guys enjoy this podcast all right guys we got on a special guest today we got on uche waneri it took us a minute to figure out how to pronounce his last name but we got it going how's it going bro i'm good i'm doing good man how about how are you guys doing i'm doing good this uh quarantine stuff's pretty crazy i'm locked up in michigan we got protests going on everywhere uh it's pretty wild Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's uh, it's a surreal time to be alive, isn't it? It yeah, is that's for where, sure. Where are you at right now? Uh, I'm actually in Atlanta. I live uh, down in Georgia, uh, okay. Atlanta area. Uh, but there, yeah, are, it's, there, uh, are they opening up the country? There? Are they opening it up there? Uh, yeah, that's supposed to be what's happening. Uh, partly, I think they're doing a slow reopen, but it's it's weird because we've only been, uh, I guess, locked down for about three weeks now. In right. Georgia, so we're not even at that month point, and they're talking about reopening. Doesn't really make sense to a lot of people. A lot of people that I've talked to around here are kind of like, you know, why would you, uh, why would you reopen businesses like gyms and salons and tattoo parlors when right. we're still supposed to be social distancing? And there's virtually no way to yeah. accomplish that if those businesses are, businesses are open. So, I guess overall, I don't see people really going to those spots. Regardless, uh, right. there might be some, but. Uh, you know, it's going to be it'll be really tough or it'll be really disappointing to see uh, the state kind of have one of those uh, ex- ex- exponential explosions of uh, of, of infections uh, right. like New York did because of a, a, a move like this. Right. It's just crazy, especially if you guys have been only locked up for three weeks. Right. What? What's why not? Why not wait out another month and just let everything die <clears throat> down? And I'm in Michigan. It's like the same thing, you know. Our cases are crazy. We're hitting like record highs. It seems like every other day. And now uh, Trump's bashing Whitmer and Whitmer's bashing Trump and it's going back and forth. And it's like all the citizens in Michigan are just sitting back looking at this like what is going on? Because some things Whitmer's doing, I think, is kind of strict. You know, you can't go fishing. You can't plant a garden. You can't go and buy seeds for a garden. And like that stuff, I think, might be too much. But like, I don't know, these protests and stuff are like too crazy because it's just going to the case levels are just going to go up in two weeks because you don't know who has it and you don't know when you have it. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. And think about the protest itself. Uh, how many people in those crowds have COVID-19, right. uh, you know, them being out there amongst everyone else. Uh, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily matter if you stand six feet from somebody. Cause if you cough or if you sneeze, then you yeah. can affect people within the 30 foot radius. I don't know if you guys saw, uh, there was a patient zero that they did a they have a diagram of on the CDC, and this person was in a restaurant in I guess they're saying was it Wuhan yeah, Wuhan China, yeah. and he was at a middle table and there were two tables next to where he was sitting, and this guy coughed, hmm. it went into the air, got carried by the by the vent- the uh, the air conditioning system, and infected nine people wow. at the wow. tables next to him. So yeah. if you're one person who can infect nine people with one cough if you're sick and showing symptoms you're not going to cough just one time you're not going right. to sneeze just one time so you're infecting on average nine people within 20 feet of you every time you cough 
That's crazy. unbelievable. Man, so, that's crazy. you know, that protest in and of itself uh, kind of created uh, the potential for uh, an explosion in infections. Uh, it, I mean, it could definitely be the next hotspot. So not a lot of uh, doesn't make a lot of sense for people to argue about having freedom when the uh, simple fact of y'all coming out there and protesting, which was symbolic uh, by all measures. They didn't put it. It didn't cause any change. Right. Uh, you know, that just endangered potentially tens of thousands of people in that area. So. And another thing about the uh, the one in Michigan that they had, they ended up blocking off. There was an ambulance that was trying to come through, and it took mm-hmm. almost 15 minutes for the ambulance to be able to go up and down the road because they had this protest going on. And if yeah. they're, fuck- they're fucking up things like that, and now, you know, I get that people want to go to work. I get people are sick of staying inside. Everyone is. But – if it's saving lives, what does the next two or three weeks matter? And if it's because the economy, listen, the economy crashed in 2009. It's crashed before and it'll get back to where it is and it'll it'll grow. You know, yeah, they, they, have- they inflate all their all a lot of their information is a little bit inflated as we all come to find out anyway. So they can the economy will recover down the road. But why put ourselves in a position where we have to relock down? And then now people are now you really are in for some for a long time because you had to go through a month. And then you try to come out early. Now you got to go through six months or three months or four months. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I want to have an NFL season this year. Yeah, and we're not going to have it because of these dumbasses. Yeah, <laughs> it could get it could get really. I mean, uh, who who canceled uh, their entire off off season schedule just today? Uh, I just seen that a little bit ago. Was uh, it, uh, that was New Orleans. The Saints, New Orleans, New Orleans. Yeah. They they wiped their entire off season program, so they're not doing workouts. They're not doing OTAs. They're not doing you know. They're not going to finish workouts. You know how hard it is to go into training camp in any kind of good shape, right, much yeah. less much less not even having the option to really work out uh, yeah. with with the team, with the players, bringing in rookies to try and get them acclimated to the playbook, get their first taste of the playbook. Uh, when you can't do any of those things, uh, it, I mean that I think is the first sign that we won't have an NFL season start on time this year. So you do you not think? Do you think that there'll be a season? Uh, I think it's uh, I think there's it's a 60 40 chance that we don't even have a season this year. Wow, to be honest, yeah, wow. I see that for I can see that for sure, but we do have the draft this weekend, the first time everything's going to be online. I was actually supposed to go to Vegas and see the first time yeah, I'm ever going to see that. Yeah. I was going to see the first time I'd ever see the draft live, and then that gets canceled. I'm supposed to be in Vegas right now. Instead, I'm sitting here on the computer with you. This is going to air the same day of the draft. Do you think that there's going to be a lot of fuck ups technology wise during the draft? Uh, I mean, this is the NFL, so I would expect that they would be uh, well prepared for you know this adjustment because the NFL usually does handle these things these right. kind of things very well. Uh, but I mean, if you, I mean, we're all sitting here right now. We're going to be, you know, we have we're, we're recording and we're talking about all these things live on YouTube. Guys are, you know, having live streams. You know, the, the, the technology of having it shown is going to be uh, I think that'll be handled well. I think it's just going to be a matter of uh, getting on the same page with the players that, are, that aren't that are necessarily uh, going to be the limelight players because they may not have a setup mm-hmm. for right. a live stream. So you may have a guy who's who is a projected third rounder who, you know, ends up going in the first round. And sure. they're not necessarily able to connect to him as in the same kind of fashion as they would for somebody in the top 10. Right. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. Um, let, let's talk about your career a little bit, bro. Let's uh, let's take it back a little bit. What got you into football? You know, was it was there someone when you were younger that brought you along that was like, all right, you know, let's play some football. Or was it just something that grew on you? <clears throat> uh, you know, I'm, I was born and raised in Dallas, uh, Texas. Um I mean, y'all all know how it is with football in that state. But right. I would say the mm-hmm. first time that I actually remember touching a football, uh, I was probably like maybe four or five years old. I was with my brother out in front of our apartment complex. My dad was walking to go to work. And, uh, you know, my parents are from Nigeria. So my dad's walking. He's got the African accent. And I tell him, hey, dad, catch. And I throw the ball to him. He he didn't he doesn't catch it very well. He's an African. <laughs> they play soccer. He's like, what's what's that? Grabs it, <laughs> and he kicks it back to me. He doesn't throw it. <laughs> he kicks it back to me and it hits me square in the forehead. Ball goes flying up. I look. He's laughing, and you know that was one of my first football moments. And I, I guess along with that, uh, I, I, when I saw the gold helmets of the San Francisco 49ers, you know, I kind of made that connection. That that was the first connection I had to football. 
Okay. Uh, but oddly enough, I didn't play organized football uh, until I was a sophomore in high school. So really, oh wow, yeah. What What was that like? What was uh, your first year in high school like for football? Was it Was it hard on you? Uh, well, I already knew football. I, I yeah. mean, I was a huge fan. Obviously, uh, I was a you know I grew up watching every 49er game I could, watching you know the Cowboys every week with my parents. Uh, and you know, I knew the rules. I knew the sport. I knew how I wanted to play it, playing outside with friends, you know, back in the day when you could go outside and play in the, in the grass right. and we would tackle and do all of that. So I, I did, I, I always wanted to do it, but my parents were kind of against it because they felt like it was too violent and they were, they were pushing me towards basketball. But my sophomore year, uh, I joined up on the, uh, I joined up on the team. They put me on varsity. Uh, so I was a uh, sophomore on varsity, which right. norm- normally you're on JV. And I'd never played football in that organized fashion yeah. uh, before that. And they put me a defensive end. So, you know, I was yeah. making plays and, you know, and uh, it was uh, that was, I guess, my first time getting able to actually play it out with other with the whole organized set. I mean, it was it okay. was it was a it was a curve learning like drills and stuff like that. But right. I mean, we're high school guys, you know, just show yeah. us what to, what to do and we'll get it done. Mm-hmm. Right. You mentioned basketball. Uh, what position did you play? Uh, I was power forward. Power uh, I forward. played. I was a power forward. I played all through middle school. I played my first two years of high school. Didn't get to play uh, my junior year because the football coach, you know, basically threatened me that I couldn't play both sports. I had to pick yeah. uh, pick one. And uh, I was actually uh, I was actually on varsity as a freshman uh in high school in basketball wow and uh you know i played i tried to play every sport i could i the only one that i that i was no good at was baseball but um i know yeah, cares so, about baseball yeah you know i was like yeah, nobody's, <laughs> like, yeah nobody's watching that but uh <laughs> but yeah so i guess uh you know once i once i finished my uh my i guess short uh short basketball career I got to kind of lean into everything football and I always kind of pictured myself as that Warren Sapp type. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> obviously that would change once I got to college. So, right. Yeah. What was the uh, out of high school? How many offers did you have? Was it just one? Oh or two, my or gosh. Did you have a shit ton? Uh, yeah, I had a ton, man. Uh, you know, every time I go back to my parents' house, uh, you know, in the summertime to visit, visit the visit back in Texas, I always look at there's this big box in the closet in the closet of my room because when I went to college, my parents moved to a new house. You know, they didn't even tell me till I came home for Thanksgiving, my my <laughs> freshman year at Purdue. But, mm-hmm. you know, I had this huge box that they kept all of my uh, high, all the papers that I got from schools, all the letters I got from schools uh, going back to my high school years. And, you know, a lot of people always ask me, why did I pick Purdue? Because I had like I had like 12 offers. Mm-hmm. Um, and I picked Purdue, but, uh, you know, I was getting letters and phone calls from, uh, I mean, you name it. I was, I was the, I was, uh, one of the top defensive linemen in the, in the country. I think I was like, uh, top 10 or top 15 defensive linemen in the state. And yeah. we, we oh, were wow. in the district. We were in our district in my high school was, uh, ranked second in the state. We had two. There were two state championship teams that came out of our nine-team district in oh, three wow. years. So we were a top. We were a top-ranked district. Now my team sucked. We sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but um, it's crazy. All these blue chips that were coming, that were going to University of Texas from all these schools in our district. Probably, I think we have like thirteen or fourteen blue chips in our district. Um, oh, wow. But the only ones who had players who made it to the NFL were the players on my high school team. Uh, that would be me. That, that'd be me, Melvin Bullitt, and Jacob Lacey. Melvin Bullitt was a safety for the uh, Colts, and Jacob Lacey right. was a cornerback from the Colts. Yeah. Uh, you know, we all, we were the only three uh, from our class you, that you, year you, that made it. You said your team sucked. What was your guys' record? <sighs> hey, man. Hey, I, hey in high school, <laughs> high school basketball, my senior year, we went 0-20, and in Michigan, you make the playoffs no matter what, we won yeah. our playoff game. Wow, so, that, so that, that was must have been impressive. a laugh. It was, uh, crazy. you know, we we won. Hmm, I think my fresh, uh, not my my sophomore year, 
uh, that was the best team we had. That was the best team we had record wise. And I think that team was like seven and three. Damn. And you guys had three players go play pro. Yeah. That's craziness. That's why. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was, you know, Melvin Bullitt had Mel. Uh, it's crazy because we played against them twice a year as the Jaguars versus the Colts. Yeah. So I would play them the first. And they're, they were, they came, they got drafted. Um, I was already in the league for three years when they got drafted. So I would, you know, the first game that we played against the Colts, I think this was my fourth year. Um, you know, after the game, we kind of we kind of met up in a corner of the field and we just stood there and we were like, Yeah, motherfuckers, <laughs> we made it. Yeah. <laughs> Daff enough, giving hugs. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. They're like, what the hell is going on with Tony? Like, we all went to high school together. Right. <laughs> and you that's know, crazy. so it's what are the chances of that? You know what I mean? That that's something that uh was that was a big moment for me personally during my career because these were guys that I've been in touch. We've always been in touch to a certain degree since we we graduated graduated from high school. But, you know, for us all to make it and we all knew right. that we made it. It wasn't like, oh, you know, this person got they we they knew I got I got drafted. You know, yeah. I still I still I still talk to him to this day. I still talk to Melvin. I still talk to his pops. His pops played at Texas A&M. Melvin went to Texas A&M and uh, Jacob Lacey went to Oklahoma State. Jacob Lacey was a quarterback at Naaman Forest High School. And uh, he ended up being a defensive back in college. You know, he gets uh, drafted in, plays for, playing with the Colts. Uh, so it was it was a surreal moment because it was a real achievement that we all recognized at that point. Right. And you know, we just gave ourselves a minute to acknowledge it. You know, catch up a little bit before we uh, got off the field. Yeah, you mentioned that you played you know a lot of defensive line in high school, and then you know eventually you moved to uh, offensive line in college mm-hmm. and NFL, obviously. Yeah. Um, had you played any offensive line prior to, to college or was that? Oh, no, I was so almost was brand new to you. Hell no. I almost <laughs> transferred out of Purdue. I almost okay. left Purdue. Really? Uh, because of that. Yeah. I was like, uh, I was a all state defensive, defensive end. Mm-hmm. I had like 80 some tackles, uh, oh, wow. three, three block field goals, eight sacks. <laughs> and this was back in what? 2000, 2002. I was okay. like, you know, so this is my second year at Purdue. And I'm like, the hell? I called my parents like, yep, <laughs> we need to get up out of here. They were going to move me to move me to offensive line. And, you know, my parents were like, no, no, just if the coaches think you should move, be moved there, it's for a reason. So just stay, give it a chance. If you don't like it at the end of the semester, we'll transfer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, our defensive end coach, who oddly enough ended up being the defensive end coach for multiple teams in the NFL, uh, Gary Emanuel, you know, he's got that New York accent, East Coast accent, uh, old head. He he pulls me into his office and, you know, lets me know uh, that they're going to move me to offensive line. And he told me pretty much like this, uh, you know, you could be a good defensive end here. You could be a starter. You could be a, a solid defensive end. And, you know, you would be at Purdue as a, as a, as a defensive player like you want. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's probably going to be it. But if you move to offensive line, you'll make millions of dollars. You'll change your life. Yeah. So it's up to you. I was like, how much? You say how much? Yeah. How much do you say? (laughs) (laughs) But uh, no, you know, it was it was one of those moments where you got where a person, you know, where as a young, young, young man. Right. uh, You kind of get humbled a little bit by the reality of what's going on around you. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, sometimes you can't let your emotions dictate, you know, what you're going to do, what your next step is. Cause I could have easily transferred out of there and, uh, who knows where I would have ended up. Who knows if I would even really been able to play, right. who knows if I didn't get moved there to another position. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I trusted in the coaches, Joe Tiller, he pulled me in his office, talked to me about it too. His, 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 uh, his, uh, sentiments were pretty much the same as coach Emmanuel's is that, you know, you could have a career past college if you, you know, play on the offensive line. This is what, you know, this is why we we brought you here to be a, a, a contributor. And, you know, you got Sean Phillips and, uh, you know, these other guys in front of you on defense at, on defense who are who are right now. I mean, those guys, you know, Sean, everybody knows Sean Phillips played a long time in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, those guys ended up being great players. But even Nick Hardwick, Nick Hardwick was a defensive tackle mm-hmm. and they moved him 
from nose uh, to center. He'd never even played football before, ever. Oh, wow. He just yeah. walked on, and he was a starting center <laughs> by the end of his first practice. Wow. So, <laughs> so, wow. uh, so, you know, it's a, it's really it was it was a it was an opportunity to kind of yeah. uh, trust in the people who were around me who were trying to give me advice, give me, and and show me a path, and and I did that, and uh, you know, it worked out. Yeah. What was cool. what was Purdue like? Was it a party school at all or no? <sighs> Define party. I mean, no, was there, it wasn't was there, a party no, school. No, probably like like house party, like seven. Uh, hell no, hell no. Uh, <laughs> but but you know, not to not to not to disregard it because we had some we had yeah. hella part we had hella parties in college, uh, <laughs> and we still you know it still was that same experience. And for anybody who's been to college. Right. I mean, you can go to a party every single day of the week somewhere right? Well, until until, uh, you know, until finals come around. But, uh, you know, Purdue is a big college. A lot of people don't don't realize that uh, mm-hmm. Purdue is, you know, one, a state school, a public school. People a lot of people think that it's uh, a private, a private school, right. uh, which feels good because it just lets you. It's kind of reaffirms that it, we should be an Ivy League school. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh but no, it was a great experience, man. You know, as far as the uh, environment, the uh, 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 at Purdue, yeah. Uh, you know, we had a there was about four what forty thousand students when I was there, so it was on oh. par with any major university. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and you you begin to learn a lot about um, you know just the achievements that Purdue has has uh, had as as a university and why it's one of the top ap- academic uh, uh, places to go for students. Um, we, there's a ton of imports from outside the U S that, that, uh, come, come for school and then they go back uh, to wherever right. they came in from. Cause, uh, the education at Purdue is that, uh, is that highly regarded. So it was a good time, man. It was a good time. I mean, not without his drama. Cause I actually only played two years of football at Purdue. Uh, right. but, uh, you know, that's a whole nother story in and of itself. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, then can you take us after Purdue? You know, you were drafted by the uh, the Jaguars. Um, are you able to uh, tell us about your uh, your draft process? Like, did you know they were interested in you and, you know, all the things leading up to the draft? Can you tell us about that process? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so the draft was, was funny because uh, I ended up getting drafted in the fifth round by Jacksonville. I think it was, what, one – 149 uh i was actually projected to go on the second and it was and i dropped because of the fact that i had got suspended from purdue for a semester uh got into a fight with a teammate ended up breaking his jaw did he Uh, deserve it oh absolutely absolutely (laughs) look this motherfucker tried to choke me he like had his hands around my neck trying to choke me uh and it was during a summer workout he put his hands on me he tried, you know, he got mad because yeah. I called because I called him out because he was being a little biatch when we were working out <laughs> and uh acting like he was gonna die when everybody who was there was doing the same workout he was doing. And yeah. you know, we were, you know, everybody was hurting, but wasn't nobody laying on their back on the ground like it was, you know, like they're about to have a heart attack. <laughs> and this guy already was a, a notoriously uh sloppy player, a notoriously uh trollish kind of guy who who talk big game, but was always getting, you know, manhandled by whoever he was around. Uh, And, you know, so, you know, you know, one of those guys on your team, the guy who's, who's just fake. He ain't, he's not real. Yeah. Yeah. And this guy, you know, comes to me after we get done with the workout, you know, and this is at a point, this is at a point where, you know, I'm going in as a preseason, all, all, all big 10 preseason, all big 10 from after my sophomore year. So I'm, you know, I'm walking, walking away, going into the weight room, and this guy just cuts me off, starts talking all that shit. I'm like, all right, dude, look, get away, go home. It's summer workout. You know, it's over with. Back and forth, back and forth. He puts his hands on me. I hit him one time, left, nice little left, little straight left, mm-hmm. and he just, ooh, <laughs> and I, I mean, <laughs> you know, so there was drama that went down after that because his parents tried to tr- try to press charges. Never pre- the police never pressed charges. But the university, I guess there was a story that the university dean and our head coach have had beef for like 10 years. 
And uh, he told me to my face that, you know, I didn't have to worry about nothing. It was going to be cool because they were going to go off what the police said. And the police said there was no evidence that he did anything. Right. Because you know, there, there were plenty of people who saw it. There yeah. Like 50 people who saw it. But everybody was down <laughs> with it because this guy is that guy. <laughs> Well, the dean made, makes the decision. So right. our, our, you know, they the police asked people who saw it. Uh, these people were like, Uche was defending himself. Like the guy, yeah. even our teammates who were like standing within feet were like, yeah, he he grabbed Uche and Uche hit him. And, uh, you know, and, and, they're, and they made it clear he only hit him one time. That was it. I hit him once and I backed off because, I mean, shoot, I wasn't trying to whoop him or I would have right. stayed on him and stayed smacking him up. But, yeah. Uh, Anyways, long story short, the dean tells me everything's going to be good. Seven days later, I get a letter in the mail in the middle of the summer that I am, oh, wow. uh, you know, suspended for the fall semester from yeah. Purdue. So <sighs> court drama and all that, after all this, uh, I mean, it was actually like national news at the time. Really? But, uh, you know, yeah, it was on CNN. Like, Damn. I mean, I don't know to what well, extent I didn't see it, but, right. uh, you know, because we sued the university to get an injunction. On okay. the uh, for the suspension, and they denied it. The judge agreed with our argument, but they can't enforce rules against the university's uh, code of conduct policy. So, right. you know that would set a precedent for them, and so they just upheld or they upheld the suspension even after right. the uh, appeal. So, sat out my junior year, played uh, my senior year, and you know they got ended up getting drafted by Jacksonville. So. And in that draft process, I had to tell that story, which was about 15 minutes longer than I just told y'all. Yeah. To 22 teams. Damn. Because that was the first question they asked me. Oh, that yeah. was the year that <laughs> Pac-Man Jones had gotten all his shit. Okay. Right. So, you know, us next, us, us 2007 draft class uh, players, if you didn't have a sparkling record, you were just tumbling. Right. On, on the, on the, uh, on the, the draft boards and. You know, they had me at second to third, uh, second to third round projection, and I ended up going fifth. But, uh, yeah, it was it, the process was, you know, pretty much pretty much the same as you see now with the combine. Combine, yeah, sure. combine I didn't even – I only ran my 40 once. I only, I only did the 40 in the bench at the combine because I pulled my quad. I got to uh, ask, we've asked all of our uh, other NFL uh, players on the show, what was your 40 time? 5-1. Okay. Five one, five one, and a five three. Okay, but well, no, five one. My five three, I ran. Uh, I ran that at the uh, at, at the training center I was at. I didn't run. I only ran my forty one time. Okay, uh, and I pulled my quad like on the last <laughs> step. Nah. On the last step, I was like, ah! and so I could have been like a four nine, oh, yeah. five flat, but it was like the last three yards. I my left <laughs> leg just felt like something just popped and Damn. and from there I didn't do a, I didn't do any of the drills I didn't do any of the uh any of the jumping stuff I just I was done after that so right I didn't even I didn't even run during my pro day all I did was Damn. a couple of a couple of drills cuz I yeah. still couldn't run sure <clears throat> so yeah was Jacksonville the only team at that point that really showed interest or I you said oh, no. 22 other teams oh. so what 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 team did you think that you were going to coming out of college uh, honestly, uh, I remember cause I hadn't, I hadn't, I had only talked to Jacksonville like at the combine, like they, I had no other communication with Jacksonville after, after the combine I was really? getting that, called. So, so they were, so they were kind of a shock to you. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to Jacksonville. I thought I was going to Kansas city, Atlanta or Chicago. Cause they were calling me like every, I got, I, I really thought I was going to Kansas city cause they were calling me like every other day and they sent me mad papers to fill out uh i feel that i had to feel like an fbi background check for them <laughs> uh so i was like shit <laughs> kc yeah uh, and and chicago was was like that as well uh but i in, in atlanta atlanta was and this is what i was told atlanta was going to draft me and then the jaguars traded up to draft me from them oh, so wow, I, was, okay. I was actually supposed to go to atlanta which was so weird. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you ended up but, uh, starting 90, 92 games as a fifth round draft pick. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, man. You know, you, you know, you see people that even drafted second round. Sometimes they don't make it fifth round. You stuck around in the league. That's impressive. You know, looking back on your career, what, what, what do you like? 
consider yourself a type of player. You know, you have some players that, you know, they were hard workers their entire career. They'd show up on time. Then you have some players that will bash their teams coming out, like leaving a team. What what type of player would you consider yourself? Uh, I mean, as an offensive lineman, you know, I, I considered myself uh, one of the best in my position in the NFL. Uh, I considered myself to be highly respected by my peers, which, you know, I was in Jacksonville. I wasn't going to get the kind of shine that guys in Dallas got. Right. Uh, but, you know, I talk, you know, guys would come up to me after the game talking about their film, the film they watched on me and how well I played. Uh, you know, guys on offense would come over to me and tell me that they've been watching our film. Like we played against the Chargers once and uh, we ended up losing. And I was going, that was uh, the year, I think they're, who's their defensive tackle, number 94? Uh, he's, he was a, I guess he was supposed to be like a all world defensive tackle at that time. I mean, where in, in Jackson? In, in San Diego? San Diego. He's still playing, I think, now. But he was like a first or a second year player uh, on on San Diego's. He was their be- best D-, D lineman by far. Uh, but, you know, I went up against him the whole game. You know, I had a good game. We ended up not losing the game. I mean, we ended up losing the game. And, you know, I'm walking to the to the locker room. One of the mm-hmm. offensive linemen from the Chargers comes over and he's like, hey, man, I want to tell you, you keep doing your thing. We've been watching you on film all year. Fucking your body and guys out there, you're fucking doing your thing. Fuck the record, man. Just keep balling. You're doing. You're, you're good. Yeah. And you know, and for me, that's what to me meant more than any you know accolades. I mean, they put me up. The Jags. Right. The Jags promoted me to go to the Pro Bowl uh, the year that uh, Maurice Jones drew won the rushing title. Uh, but you know, that's still that's a that's a long shot if you're not you know a running big, back yeah. or a quarterback or, or for yeah. the Jaguars. Right. But if you're not a team that is really a big a media market, you know, yep. that's a you long gonna, track. You ain't going to get that shine for sure. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I, I played against Cat. I've done, I look, I've had plenty of games against guys who had multiple Pro Bowls where they had their worst mm-hmm. games of the season against me, like right. statistically and from a grade out standpoint, their worst games were against me. Jarrell Casey, uh, and Dominica Sue, uh, uh, Albert Hainsworth, like the third time I played him because the first time he wrecked my ass. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, I played against a ton of guys who were Hall of Famers. Shoot, yeah, yeah. You know, me and Ray Lewis were on a first name basis. You know, uh, yeah. during during the time during you know the time while I was playing, just because you know he seen me so much when when yeah. I would be out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, guys showed respect. You know, guys respect me. I respect guys I go against. And to me, that was that was probably the most the 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 best. Kind of, I guess that was the best affirmation for me mm-hmm. of how I played as a player because I played it straight up. I didn't talk shit, but I was trying to bury your ass. Right. I didn't <laughs> like, you know, I didn't, I didn't make predictions, but I knew I was going, I was going to dominate you, or, I, or you weren't going to dominate me. Right. Uh, and you know, it's not to say I haven't been beat. It's not to say guys haven't had good games against me because I mean, shit. Probably the worst game of my entire career was against Tampa Bay, and. <laughs> I had, I mean, it wasn't that I played bad. It's just that I had like three holding calls in like 10 plays. I was yeah. like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. and, and I don't think I'd had a holding call. Like, I think I had like maybe two holding calls my entire career before right. that. So, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, so so just being realistic about, you know, what the game is, is, is uh, it's, it's being able to go out there and do what you love and, and have guys – who you may ne- may not necessarily know also show you respect because they realize they recognize what they see on the tape. I mean, I think I think right. that's better than anything you could hand me as far as like an accolade as a player. And I still got I, I still got all AFC South uh, yeah. three three out of four years at one point. Oh, so, wow. nice. who would you say is the uh, the best coach you ever played for, whether it was pro or college? Oh, Jack Del Rio. Jack, Jack Del Rio. Yeah. I, I love Jack. Jack was a mm-hmm. great coach. Um, you know, he's one of those guys that, you know, I respect, I, I, I had a lot of uh, appreciation because he drafted me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also when I got to Jacksonville, my rookie year in 2007, uh, you know, just the way that he approached, uh, dealing with the players, I thought was, was a breath of fresh air because I played at Purdue. We had Joe Tiller. Mm-hmm. Joe Tiller is, you know, old Bear Bryant right. type of coach, right. you know, iron and fire. Like that's how you create a football player. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's it's a much different dynamic, but it does build you as a player as, as when you're young to have somebody like Coach Tiller. But 
uh, as a professional, you know, you got to have a little bit more, uh, there has to be a little bit more flexibility to it. And I think Jack was in his prime as a coach at that point. Yeah. So he had a, a pretty good understanding of how to, how to deal with players, how to relate with players. He played the game, which is always something that automatically yeah. ingratiates you with, uh, uh, with the guys that you're going to be coaching because you've been there, you know, it's right. not a, Oh, you ain't never played ball, but somehow you're now a head coach. Uh, who has no real football background. He was one of those guys that had a, a strong background, played a long time in the league, paid his dues as a coach, uh, was a good coordinator, and then came in and got that, that uh, head coach position. And, uh, you know, I always, every time I see Jack on, on TV coaching, I'm happy because I got a lot of respect for, for, for how he approached, uh, uh, just how he approached the game as a whole. Right. That's awesome. I remember, uh, I think I don't remember what season it was, but Tim Tebow was linked to coming to Jacksonville. You didn't, you weren't having none of that. You were, you were saying, "Fuck that, we don't want that lefty who can't throw the ball downfield at all." Well, yeah, I think you might have made headlines even for coming out and saying that you didn't like that idea. Oh kind of yeah, oh, yeah. That. yeah, yeah, man. That was uh, that was my first uh, NFL drama, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I go on. I, I went on the forums for the Jaguars and. Uh, you know, it's crazy. Like you go on the forums, you, you talk with fans and, and fans are always really, uh, really, they, they, they really like to ask, ask questions about the future. And, yeah. you know, and we, I mean, it was something that we were hearing from the yeah. moment that, they, I mean, from the moment they were talking about this cat uh, going to the NFL, you know, fans were like, oh, what about Tim Tebow? What about Tim Tebow? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, look, at first I declined to kind of go into it because, mm -hmm. you know, right. I'm not a scout. And that's what I told yeah. them. But uh, then, you know, the, just the list of questions about that kept going or kept popping up. I said, oh, you know what? <laughs> Fuck Tim Tebow. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Start typing away. <laughs> da, 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 da. And I just, you know, I tried to keep it brief because about halfway through, I started kind of like getting tired of thinking about how much. How many things I could put into it? <laughs> yeah. uh, it was affecting my attention span. So I said, all right, let me just get this wrapped up. Let's just make it a top five. Uh, and, um, <laughs> you know, and I just hit the send button. Yeah. And, you know, then I went out and grabbed some food and I came back. My phone rang. My sister's like, what the hell's going on in Jacksonville? <laughs> I'm like, huh? She's like, go to yahoo.com. You know, yahoo.com has like the main story on yeah. the front page. And, yeah. and as soon as I hit enter on yahoo.com there i am like blocking somebody <laughs> and yeah. it got so and i'm like whoa <laughs> and uh and you know what this is another reason why i love jack you know that was like right uh that was right at a point where you know as a team we were expected to do more we we're expected to have a good season and um that was kind of like a uh, going into your middle middle of the off season, kind of uh, kind of like disruption, I guess you could yeah. call it. from my minor, minor to me. To, as, I mean, I feel like it's minor, but yeah. I mean, when you're on the front of the of Yahoo, that's something big, right? So, sure. Uh, you know, and you were just speaking the truth. I mean, I was just, I was just speaking yeah. what I thought. Well, Every, no, well I mean, I, I mean, all right. the analysts were saying it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't feel like I was coming from a place of hate when I was saying right. that he's garbage. I was just <laughs> being like, hey, I, I mean, I, have you seen the quarterbacks that throw the ball? <laughs> yeah, they throw way better than that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they don't, uh, they don't throw twenty yard ducks. Yeah, they don't <laughs> throw, they, they don't, they don't throw balls that look like punts. You know. Like, <laughs> Unless you're Peyton Manning, you can get away with that once in a while. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you know, Jack. Um, you know, they they asked. I guess somebody from the media asked our G, uh, or asked the GM, asked Jack. You know how they felt about it, and Jack was like, "We feel like Uche can say, you know, he can say right. how he feels, and that's fine. Like, we're happy that he put his name behind it, and he stood behind what he said." Right. Um, he didn't, you know, we're not going to penalize him for speaking his mind. Yeah. And, you know, and for me, that was huge because it's like, yeah, yo, your really coach cool. is back, got your back. And he's letting people know that, you know. Yeah. One, that was one of the things, one of the rules we always had on the team was if you say something to the media, then put your name on it. Don't say anonymous. 
Right. Sure. Yeah, them. that's the worst. So I'm a I'm a Lions fan, right? Last year there was like 15 anonymous players that seemed like came out and said stuff about Patricia. And it's like, guy, if you just if you hate him that much, just come out and say it, right? Yeah. So then they can they can get you out of Detroit if you really don't want to be in there. Why do you say things anonymously? Yeah, yeah, that was one of the main things. And I mean, I don't think I ever I don't think I ever heard of a player saying anything anonymously. Certainly not in Jacksonville while I was yeah. there. But if a player is if a player don't feel you know if a player feels a certain way. They're, they sh- they should be putting right. their name behind it to begin with, but yeah, um, yeah, you know that for me was a huge uh, that, that that made me feel really really good that he was uh, that he had the back of his players like that, you know, and that that's what also uh, garnered so much respect for me for for Jack as a coach. Now, if you want to talk about the worst coach, sure, yeah, Mike bring it on, fucking malarkey. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, my, just listen to his last name, Malarkey. Yeah. That whole bunch of Malarkey. <laughs> no, right? no, I mean, the dude is – I mean, look, man. This was right after Jack. Uh, this guy was such a terrible coach. Was there a ping-pong table situation? Did he take out the ping-pong table? Oh, they took everything <laughs> out. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they took everything out of there. Yeah, we didn't have none of that. Until oh, really? But, but you guys before. had it before. Yeah, before when they came in for training camp, yeah, they took all that stuff out. And then they, uh, put it back, then they put it back in at the training camp. Oh, but, they put it back in. Yeah, yeah. At least but, they did that because, like, with Detroit, they took the ping pong table out and they won't put it back in there. Oh, you're going to lose your team. I, well, they are. They are. They're losing everybody <laughs> over a ping pong table. <laughs> that's simple. You're just going to lose your team. That's that's type of shit. I mean, look, man, you take away from our recreational time like that where we can't, yeah. like, wait when we don't have – especially in a, in a training, training camp when, when you need – kind of a mental like getaway at a certain point. Yeah. Uh, you know, then your players are going to be dysfunctional. I believe that. That's when you start <laughs> hearing about guys get in trouble. But right. uh, but yeah, man, like I I never told many I've only told a couple people about how I felt about Malarkey uh or what what I no I know. I haven't um, I haven't told just a few people, but I'm saying I was going to ask to be traded from Jacksonville if he really? didn't fired. I, t- I t- my agent and me had agreed to it. Because I ended up having to get knee surgery after the season because of the bullshit that he was having us do uh, in our training camp practices. I tore my I tore my meniscus and I tore the cartilage in, the, in my right knee. Uh, wow. I tore it uh, the first day. The, no, no, my bad. The, uh, the no, yeah, the first day of training camp. I wow. tore it doing some new bullshit drill that he wanted us to do. And I mean, dude, I played an entire season. That was that was the most depressed I'd ever been that mm-hmm. season. I didn't want to play. I didn't want to play in Jacksonville for one second longer if he wouldn't have gotten fired uh, after that season. Uh, I had to get, you know, I had to, I was taking toward all shots like twice a week wow. just to be able to just to be able to just be able to practice. Like I would take a uh, 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 incident. Uh, uh, what is it called? In, uh what was that? That we had another uh, anti-inflammatory uh, that we. That it was a pill that you would take as well. But I would take Toradol and I would take this pill. I would take the pill before every practice, and wow. and one one game against the Buffalo Bills uh, in 20, 2011, um, like they forgot my pills, and I was yeah. like, I was like, I ain't playing. I looked right. in their faces and was like, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. If I don't got it, I ain't playing. Yeah. You know, either y'all give me another shot at Toradol or I'm not playing this game because that's how bad my knee mm-hmm. would hurt in any pass set that I did. Anything moving moving backwards, mm-hmm. it, would, it felt like it would felt bone on bone. It felt like I had a, a a chisel, somebody just chiseling into the back of my knee with a with a pointy uh, 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 rod. So, you know, it was a that was a long season. My right leg was like double the size of my left leg. Like it was. It was bad. So, and we ended up yeah. going like two and fourteen or some oh some mm-hmm. shit. And I and I ended up getting my first concussion uh, that uh, that season against any uh, against New England. And they were trying to get me to come back for the last game of the season. They were trying to get me back after after that shitty season with that record. Yeah, they were like uh, wow. they were like, yeah, we got to get you to pass that impact test. Uh, by Friday, right? 
I'm like, <laughs> I, I start laughing at him like, what? <laughs> I said, hey, yeah. man, motherfuckers, I'm not playing. Y'all go ahead and right? mark that down. Y'all just put my name over there and put out because I'm not <laughs> playing. I'm not practicing. I'm not doing shit. I will see y'all in March. Yeah, and that's I told that's what I told our uh, our equipment manager. I mean, he it was Mike Ryan at the time, and he knows me. Yeah. He knows me. You know, he's been there since I've been drafted. Mike, you know, I'm not I'm not playing. He's like, well, you know, I'm just telling you because that's what they that's what they told me from the top, and I'm like, mm, no, nah, I'm like, <laughs> don't tell them I don't give a fuck what they think. <laughs> I'm not playing. Right. I will see y'all in March. I didn't pass my impact test. I didn't pass the uh, uh, the baseline test for four weeks. Wow. So how wow. do you think? I mean, I, I could barely look at a screen. Right. I'll get nauseous. Like, yeah. I just laid in bed and, you know, in, in like dimly lit rooms mm -hmm. with glasses on, like for like four or five days. But yeah. then yeah. I couldn't pass the cognitive test. For four weeks, so it was wow. three weeks into the off season when right. I finally passed it. Yeah, so wow. you know, to me, it was ridiculous that they would even think that I, I would consider that. That's when I was like, you know what? It's time to get the fuck up out of here. I said, right. if, they don't, if they don't fire this cat, uh, if they don't fire him, and you know, it was what? I think they fired him right after the season. But I told my uh, after that that little conversation with Mike with Mike. Uh, uh, the, going into the last week, uh, that's when I hit up my agent and was like, look, if they don't fire him, please request a trade. I, I don't want to stay here no more with this cat. If he's a head coach, I don't right. want to be here. Mm -hmm. He's fucking terrible. Everybody on our team, I mean, dude, we were in week five, and guys were like, I'm dead, have no legs. He did. And wow. we were in full pads all the time, Wednesday and Thursday, mm -hmm. banging. And... Uh, you know, guys, his style was just a style that doesn't exist in the NFL anymore. It's been gone for about 15 years. You don't just yeah. bury your guys into the ground with uh, a, a, with extended practices and, you know, and, and constantly all this shit about being tough. Like, you know, you could at least give us a coordinator that knows what he's doing. I mean, he had we had something, the, you know, we had a, we had a terrible offense, we had a terrible defense. And we're still, and you're just over here grinding us in the dirt. You know, week five comes around and guys from multiple positions are huddled up. Uh, and this is after pregame warmups talking about how tired we are and how we just don't think we can even play <laughs> right now. Like, wow. guys, we're dead five weeks into the football season. Damn. Jeez, yeah. You know? So, so. Yeah, so, yeah, tell us what you're doing these days. I see your uh, your YouTube channel, The Observant Lineman. Is that uh, kind of what you're you're focusing on now, or you have other stuff going on too? Uh, yeah, you know, I got a couple businesses uh, that are that are running right now. I'm, I'm, I'm into CBD at the current moment. Uh, I'm a partner in a manufacturing plant that handles CBD brands. Um, also, obviously, doing my YouTube thing. Observant Lineman, check me out. <laughs> uh, but... Um, yeah, that's that's more of a that's more of my my hobby, you know what I mean? And that's yeah. something where I try to connect with with an audience about uh, my experiences in football. So uh, obviously, I love to do that. Uh, and obviously, I've got money that I earned from football that's yeah. you know, doing its thing. Uh, so I'm trying to trying to just manage to do things as easy as I can. Um, I've owned a couple of clubs out here in Atlanta uh, for the last seven years. So. Uh, those things, those things have come and and they've been a part of my life and they've had their places. So uh, right now I'm just trying to do it a little bit easier uh, right. because, you know, things are hectic, as you know, in the world, obviously with the lockdown. But, um, you know, it's uh, it's been it's been fun. There's always still that little void, you know, from from not having football. Uh, yeah, yeah. As a oh, yeah. I think every player who's played yep. football for any extended period will tell you the same thing. I mean. Uh, you, you, there's a spot in football. There's, there's something about football that fills the fulfills you on a level that very little other things can. So, yep. um, you know, there's nothing like Sundays, uh, but you know, it's that, that time has passed. I enjoy watching it again, at least because, you right. know, for the first like two years, you're like, I can't, yeah, like, like, oh, yeah. I, can't, right. I can't, I can't watch, <laughs> yeah. uh, but you still watch cause you're that competitor. But yeah, uh, you know, I, I watch football probably more now than I did when I first retired. So, Right, Jacksonville. Uh, sure. your, is Jacksonville your favorite team then? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm a Jaguar yeah. man. I'm a Jaguar. Oh yeah, through and through. Right. What do you think uh, about what they have uh, going on with 
You know, they traded uh, <laughs> Jalen Ramsey. Uh, and Gakwe is not coming back. They're looking to trade Fournette now too. Nick uh, Foles they traded. Honestly, man, um, it's weird. They say the history often repeats itself. And yeah. if you know about the Jaguars from 2007 to about 2011, uh, it looks almost exactly like the Jaguars from 2017 to yeah. now 2020. You have a uh, GM who comes in, uh, you see, a, you see, or you have, you see that first year of immediate success. Like we had in 2007 when we were in the playoffs uh, and, you know, same thing as 2017, when you know they made it to the AFC title game, we made it to the divisional, but they made the AFC title game. And uh, after that, after that playoff uh, uh, appearance, after that success, yeah. you're, you say, okay, the Jaguars are going to be a force. <laughs> yeah. And then for four years, you watch a team literally get picked apart brick by brick. And before you know it, they're back in rebuild mode. And, yeah. you know, look, man, I went through one – I went through two rebuilds. Mm -hmm. I had one, two, three – I guess technically I had four head coaches in Jacksonville when I played there. Wow. Oh, wow. I had four head coaches. I had three general managers. Wow. <laughs> like – Yeah, it's not a, not a good way to build a yeah, program. You know what I mean? Like, right. I was there when they had Shaq Harris and then – the name that shall not be uh, announced, Gene Smith. Gene Smith is like a dirty word now in <laughs> Jacksonville. If you say Gene Smith anywhere in Jacksonville, yeah. somebody will turn around and say, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> because that guy ruined the Jaguars. He yeah. ruined the Jaguars. I don't even think he got hired by another team for anything. He's no longer in football. And he's one of those guys that has no football background. He was a high school principal, and he became <laughs> wow. a, and, he, and somehow he became a scout in the sure. NFL. And then they gave him the general manager job. Wayne Weaver did when wow. he owned the team. Uh, so you know, I've seen the winds of change, <laughs> and I've seen how they flow through a franchise. And yeah. the Jaguars right now, uh, yeah, they're at that same ugly spot uh, that we were uh, that we were in from two thousand eight. Uh, basically on until, you know, Gus Bradley and Caldwell came in because I was a, I played a year with them, too. So, uh, yeah, I just the Jaguars, for some reason, just have very, 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 very poor uh, management of good teams. And it disappears to me like it's happening all over again now because Caldwell clearly don't know what the fuck he's doing. And, you know. Look, he's made good. He's made some great draft decisions. Mm -hmm. He has drafted great players. I mean, he's drafted he's drafted players who became impact players. Yeah, like right. uh, you know, we all know that he he's done a, he did a good job of that in Jacksonville, uh, building them up. Uh, I mean, yeah, they, Blake Bortles was a bust, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, I guess you could call Justin Blackman uh, uh, Justin Blackman a bust as well. Uh, but that guy, actually, that's the Jaguars' fault. He's a bust. That's their fault. That's another story. Because uh, that guy, that guy should be, he should be the best receiver in the NFL right now, based on how he was, what it was yeah. looking like with him. Right. They didn't, they didn't give him the help he needed, and yeah. that's on them. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of good players who end up being, you know, dismantled after all that, after that year of success. These guys think that they have it figured out, uh, you know, and you, how many guys are left on Saxonville on that Saxonville defense? I don't think any of them are. I think yeah. they're all gone. I yeah. think that, you know, the next one out the door is definitely going to be Leonard Fournette. Yep. And uh, this is, it doesn't really make sense to me why this is what the approach they're taking because the general manager and the head coach are on one year deals. They're on one year. You have to win. Yeah. Now, yeah. or you're done tomorrow, and there is no middle ground for anything. So why are you going back into right. rebuild mode? You, you should don't be bringing, four bringing, years. bringing people in. Man, y'all should have spent every fucking dime y'all yeah. had and right. brought people in. And yeah. these guys are going into rebuild mode. So Dave Caldwell, to me, when I seen that, when I saw that these are when it when it just when you start seeing all these big names from Jacksonville traded for nothing, traded for nothing, fire sale. I mean, 
That's crazy. You don't know what you're doing because there's right. no way you're winning this right. year. You're not going to win on, anything. Especially if you're on, if you're on a one-year deal, it's not time to rebuild. You are in a literal. I mean, Shad Khan put this shit in fucking writing, and it was yeah. read on TV. They got one year. <laughs> yeah. And that, and they're just fired. They're getting. And so now you said, okay, well, let's get rid of Jalen. Let's get rid of Jalen Ramsey. Let's get rid of K, uh, K, uh, Kaylee's Campbell. Let's get rid of. Uh, uh, let's. Well, we're about to get rid of Yannick Ngakwe. Uh, let's get rid of every guy that made our team what it was. But we got Minshew mania, so we're gonna <laughs> yeah. be all right. We got no. a guy with a mustache. Yeah. No. They're gonna find. <laughs> you're gonna find out real quick next year if he's the real deal. I don't. Yeah. I don't believe it. I, I don't believe it. See, I, I really, I'm not a Gardner Minshew guy either. I don't believe it because when you have a quarterback that's going to be that kind of guy, you see it immediately. Yeah, you yeah. see it. He's not. He, yeah, he's he's an invasive quarterback, and that's good. Mm-hmm. He can, he can throw the ball. Yeah, but <laughs> he's better than Tebow. He's better than Tebow. That goes without <laughs> saying. Yeah. But I'm sure there's a difference between. When you see a rookie player like, or you see a young player like Gardner Minshew, when you saw a young player like Patrick Mahomes, Patrick right. Mahomes wasn't wasn't some first round pick. He was what a third round pick? No, he's a first rounder. Mahomes was first round. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. thinking of, I'm thinking about uh, 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 Russell Wilson. Right? Yeah, Wilson. Russell yeah. Wilson. Yeah. Russell Wilson was a third round pick. Yep. But the moment you saw Russell, Russell Wilson playing quarterback on the field, yep. you was like, he's Damn. got it. Yeah, he's they got started it. him from day one, even though he was a third round pick. They put him yeah. right in. Yeah, he's got it. Yep. Minshew, I mean, if, if Minshew was Minshew, we would have seen know. more. We would have We'd seen know. more of that. They yeah, would right. you would have heard you would have heard them talking about him even yeah. with Foles. Right. And, they, yeah. that, and, and in that, I think that they did Nick Foles dirty. Nick sure. Foles has been getting done dirty his entire career. They did him dirty because they didn't even give him a chance. He what did oh. he do on the first drive, the first series as a quarterback? Started in a touchdown and just so happened with his terrible luck, he broke his goddamn collarbone yeah. uh, at the same time. But then you only give him three games off of really not even playing the entire season to show you he can do anything. Right. Come on, man. You didn't pay him that kind of money for that. And I'm exactly. sure that they didn't really do much to help him either because they right. fell in love with Minshew because of all that mess either. But what was Minshew's record while he was gone? Four and four. Yeah. Nothing. So to right. me, he ain't he ain't got it because yeah. we got a great we got we got a great running back. He's inconsistent right now, but he's got the skills. We've yeah. got the best receiving core, probably one of the top five receiving cores in the NFL. We've got capable tight ends, and we've got uh, uh we've got a good defense. Prior to Jalen Ramsey uh, uh right. being traded, we have a defense that is good enough. To help us win, right? But he only went four and four. That's so, crazy. So to me, he ain't it. I don't know why they think he is. I mean, right. I, I would spend at least my second round pick on a quarterback. Yeah. I know that <laughs> for sure. For sure. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not a Minshew believer either. But uh, we got to kind of wrap this up here shortly. One more thing. I know you're pumping out YouTube com- content, which we already talked about. Um, you do these first encounters on YouTube. Do you have any first encounters that you can share with us? Uh, if, I, if I share one with y'all, I'm not going to have a video to make. Hey, it can be a video you already did. It can be a video you already did. Oh, man. Well, uh, if you go on my channel and you check out my first encounters playlist, uh, the, the very I think the very first one I did was on Ray Lewis. And it was on my first year as a starter, my second year. Um, it was the last game of the season. And we go into Baltimore. Baltimore has to win to get in the playoffs. And we're playing the late game against Baltimore. So this was like a playoff game. And we, you know, we are, I think it's like a, I think we're either up by three or up by by seven, something like that. And uh, we have a fourth and one in the middle of the, in the middle of the field. I'll never forget this. This, this shit right here was so crazy. We got a fourth and one in the middle of the field. All week in practice, we had short yardage, fourth and one, fourth and two package. We're running a power play uh, right up the middle with Maurice Jones Drew. We'd already scored on this play multiple times against, like, we scored against the the, the, the Broncos on like a 60 yarder with it um, on, on, on a fourth and one, I think it was. But uh, 
we uh we go in we, we come out of the huddle now you know I'm a young cat I'm a, I'm a second year player I'm I don't really uh necessarily know all the nuances yet right. of things that defenses do but when I got in my stance you know I got down to my stance I looked up there's Ray Lewis just like him just like on film like okay there's Ray and I just I didn't really look at him I tried to avoid I avoid eye contact <laughs> and when I look up he goes 77's pulling. And I'm like, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> the whole defense slides <laughs> over. And they all slide over. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> and I'm looking up because we did have a check on the play. So I like look up in my periphery, Dave Garrard. I'm like, motherfucker, change the play. Change the play. Change the play. Green 88. Green 88. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I pulled as hard as I could. I was like, I'm going to try to kill this motherfucker. Yeah. That's all I got left. <laughs> Do or die. <laughs> and I just come downhill as hard as I can. Just like, come on, come on, come on. And then I just, and then here's Ray Lewis. <laughs> he went right through my chest. He hit me. <laughs> and I, and for about three seconds, I thought I was paralyzed because <laughs> I had that shock wave go through my finger, all the way to my fingertips. All the way down to my toes, and I was on the ground. I'm like, oh god, I think I'm paralyzed. <laughs> Ray Lewis runs through my chest. Then oh. he runs through Maurice Jones Drew. Maurice Jones Drew fumbles the ball, <laughs> and, then, and then they 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 land on it on fourth and one. It was the biggest train wreck I'd ever been involved in as a player, and um, I had a headache for the rest of the day. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was my first concussion. Oh, really, uh, yeah. but. Well, not officially, but yeah, my head yeah. was banging for the rest of the night, like flying yeah. back. I got a headache. I'm just like, damn, damn, he hit me hard. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but uh, that was the only time he ever did that to me because I got his ass later. Did you? As oh, I got as I got more experience and you know you sure. become more yeah. crafty, and right. you know how to, you know how to take on those kind of guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was able to get the get the upper hand a few times. He got mad at me one time on the field. Because oh, yeah. I, I ran him about eight yards, nine yards out of the play. <laughs> and he was like, all right, big man. We yeah. can do this. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. <laughs> I was like, let's do it the easy way, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me go back to my huddle real I'm quick. I'm going right? back to the huddle. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Oh, wow. Was that yeah, good? I was that... even Ray Lewis staring <laughs> right? down yelling at you. Wow. <laughs> he got mad because I just <laughs> yeah. I, ran, I ran him off on a play. Didn't let him get yeah. involved nowhere. So you know right. that's that's kind of the competitor he was. He wants to be on every be in on every play, yeah, but right. um, you know. So that was uh that was my first encounter with him though uh, as a second year player, and you know, yeah. never never forget it. That's really the only player I remember from that game. Was that kind yeah. of your welcome to the NFL moment? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, dude. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, I thought I was paralyzed. Like yeah. seriously, for a few seconds, I was like, oh shit, right. Okay, my, okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Get up. You, get up. Oh, my head hurts. You mentioned uh, concussions, and I think you talked about other injuries, too. Do you have any uh, pain right now after playing? Well, obviously, yeah. yeah but, but, like, but like, to what extent? Because some players, you know, some players can't even walk after a couple years of being done in the NFL. So, I mean, what kind of, uh, what kind of shape are you in? Well, I mean, you know, luckily for me, I only had, uh, I only had to get surgery – I got surgery twice uh, okay. as a player, okay. and that was on my right knee. Um, I guess now, what, I'm almost six years retired. Uh, I really – I have pain in, in areas. It's, it's a lot more with your joints necessarily than with one thing in particular. Uh, my right shoulder, if I had to say what hurt me the most, would be my right shoulder. You know, a lot of double teams that you use yeah. that shoulder to go up in there. Um but, you know, the typical things with us are going to be, you know, fingers, yeah. knees, elbows, all the joints. You know, for me, um, probably the things that hurt the least were my ankles. Really? And, and it's funny because I never got taped. Oh, I, ne really? I, I never got my ankles taped. I always mm -hmm. played, just put my shoes on, put my socks on, put my shoes on, never got taped. Uh, never wore, well, until they started making us, I never wore leg pads. Uh, I would just get a boxer wrap on my hands, so that was good for grip. You're able to grab guys real quick, real good mm -hmm. with them, because it pulls all of your ligaments down and kind of got that boxer feel. But um, but yeah, man, I mean, you know, my back, 
back is all jacked up. I mean, but that's these are all things that for us is typical. We all got right. messed up backs. We all got messed up joints. Right. Uh, but uh, I guess uh, as far as like the whole CT thing goes, I mean, I think we all exhibit a little bit of it just because yeah. Yeah. there's there's too much. I mean, if you want, if you do the math on it, it's like the potential to be hundreds of thousands of hits mm-hmm. just yeah. in your professional career. Not even right. talking about college and and you know, and this that's like practice game. Yeah, you're always having contact. So right, uh, it's I guess it's just to 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 each player. It's it's just how it affects you. And and I, I mean, I'm not going to say I haven't had like certain things that I feel like okay, that's kind of. I think that might be a little bit of CTE, but I, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, I wouldn't, I've never forgotten where I lived. I've never forgotten yeah. where I was. I've never had like huge memory lapses. Right. Um, sure. I've never had any of those, those level of things. Uh, but you know, you still have a little bit depression, but that's again, yeah. you wonder is that everybody or is that just, you know, right. Right. because of the, uh, because of football. So um, yeah. I believe in it. I believe the CTE thing is real because I've I've seen too much of it in guys right. who were who were affected, you know, who were affected severely. Uh, these are guys who were maybe on practice squad, guys who were just disposable to the coaches, so they put them in on everything. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I've also seen it on players who played, you know, who were starters and and you know I was on who were team who were my teammates on the offensive line. I mean, Vince right. Manuai, Vince Manuai passed away. Uh, he was pretty much my mentor, uh, and I still got his. Uh, I got his funeral card back there uh, on my little my little case. But uh, you know, Vince Manawai, he was suffering. Uh, you know, um, uh, uh, there was another cat, our left guard. Um, uh, why do I always forget this cat's name? I kind of hated him, <laughs> but. Uh, we had another offensive lineman who has, you know, who's who still deals with post concussion concussion syndrome right now. So, um, you know, guys are affected by it, and uh, you know, I think that the NFL owes it to the players to do a little bit more in that respect, just because there are so many guys who really do have, uh, maybe not super severe, but something. They got little right. mild things here and there that, that are a result of football. Even you know, family members can see it too. So it's not like, yeah. you know, guys guys are just making stuff up. Right. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on uh, Roger Goodell? Like all around from what he does during the season, finding players, you know, and then him, does he help players afterwards at all? Or you don't look too happy about him. <laughs> hey, I feel the same way. I hate him. I, I Fuck printed off te- Hey, boom. <laughs> Fuck Roger. Hey, did, did you see that uh, Bud Light's doing a commercial still with having fans boo him for the draft this weekend? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Why ass. not? Yeah, He's I'm terrible. actually my, my voice is actually in it. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I, that's what Bud Light said. So we'll have to see because I fucking oh, hate Roger sweet, Goodell. Sweet, so sweet. <laughs> sweet. No nah, man. You know, look, it's it's uh, we all know that he's on the owner's payroll. Yeah. It's not his. It's not in his best interest to do anything that favors us. Right. And you know, he could if he wanted to. Look at how uh, look at how what Adam Silver handles the NBA. Yeah. He Everyone takes- loves Adam Silver. He he takes care of those guys. He takes yeah. care of the players. He looks out for them, not only in the interest of the NBA, but also in the interest of their futures. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm good friends with Jason Terry. And Jason Terry, you know, we talk all the time about how, you know, the NBA, they got lifetime health care insurance. The NFL right. has, like, you get five years and then you're done. You got to go That's pay. That's crazy. You got to get whatever, whatever. But we're the most popular sport in the country, though. So how come mm-hmm. we can't have, have those things that they get? They, and they look at those. They, uh, as a league that looks after their players post career, right? You know? So the NFL, if they can't look after their players post career the way that they do, the way the other leagues do, then then you know it's like it doesn't make sense because it's like how can you be a league that is so that's so prosperous but you're not taking care of the basics for your players? Right. They, they'll uh, they'll pay them up front, but long run they're they're not worried about them. Yeah, oh hell no, players are crazy because they because they know that machine. Is too strong for anybody to stop. I right. mean, what? Even look at. I mean, brain brain damage won't stop kids from still playing football. Right. It won't stop parents from still sending their kids out there. You know, right. I feel like you know personally, I feel like kids shouldn't even be involved in tackle football until high school. I think I'm lucky that I didn't play football until high school. 
Right. Because a lot of cats who've been playing since Pop Warner, they have they have serious problems with CTE. Well, you, they have serious problems with with all that. Well, you can't have your head banging around like that as a child, and that's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, you're not even developed, and right. you know, your brain hasn't even developed fully developed, and you're already subjecting it to uh, potentially hundreds of concussive hits over however long you play Pop Warner. You know, right. I'm lucky because my dad couldn't afford Pop Warner. He was like, he ain't paying fifty bucks for me to get okay. no. To, to get in the league, then go pay go pay another hundred and fifty dollars for, for shoulder pads. Why do you need pads? What do you need pads for? Yeah. So oh, he, he you know, so I ended up doing what didn't cost a lot of money to play basketball. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, uh it it I'm lucky that that I, that period of my life uh I wasn't being put into to contact sports like that because it's just not necessary, but the NFL is a league that owns a day of the week. So, right. yeah. uh, and, now, and now a couple days of the week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Monday, I mean, Thursday, and Sunday. Monday, Thursday, Sunday. You know, Sunday is, I guess, their day specifically. Yeah, Monday, there. Monday, they got your nighttime. Yeah, and Thursday they got your nighttime. But uh, on Sunday, from hell, from noon to to midnight, everybody's watching football from yeah. September to December. So, yep. Um, you know, it's it's that kind of it's that it's that that kind of power that the league that the league holds. So, right, uh, it doesn't make sense that they don't handle things a little bit better for their players. Right, I agree with you there. But we got to wrap this up, guys. Uche, I appreciate you hopping on, bro. Definitely would love to have you on again. You know, you're full of a lot of insight. Where can everybody check you out on social media? Uh, no, hey, look, man, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, absolutely honored to be on the show. Uh, you can check me out on uh on Instagram at at Chukwu, that's C H U K W U. And you can check me out on Instagram at Chukwu77, C H U K W U77. And you can check out my YouTube, youtube.com backslash C H U K W U67. But, or you can just search Uche Waneri on YouTube and my channel right. will come up. Mm -hmm. uh, I am the observant lineman. Uh, but yeah, check me out on there and cool. uh, make sure you subscribe and hit a like button. All right, guys. Perfect. Great. Thanks for hopping on, Uche. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you guys. Y'all have a good one. Yeah. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed listening to episode 10 of the Trev Stone Show. This episode we had on Uche Waneri. Uh, an awesome episode. We talked about a whole bunch of different things. Uh, I think you guys probably enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to go listen to past episodes because this entire podcast series, we've had big headlines. We had on R. Kelly, his lawyer, attorney for episode number one. I recommend you guys go listen to that if you haven't already. There's tons of episodes in this podcast series that you guys will enjoy, especially if you joined, if you enjoyed today with Uche. Um, we shared a lot of laughs, so go back, listen to the last episodes. If you guys want to watch this, and if you're listening to it on iTunes or anything, and if you want to go watch it, go watch it on YouTube. It's available there and on prosportsextra.com. Be sure to like, rate, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace. Thank you.